When a vehicle crashes, it's engineered to crumple, so to prevent death and limit injury. While this is a design meant for safety, once damage to the chassis has occurred, the structural integrity of the car or the truck becomes jeopardized. This means that your car is wrote off and no longer capable of drive or permissible on the road. When thinking about the human body, imagine the spine as a chassis of a car. If we cause damage to the spine, whether that be from an acute injury or prolonged abnormal loading of the cartilage in the discs, pain occurs. As a kinesiologist, whether analyzing my own movement or that of a client's, my number one focus is always spinal stabilization. Am I in the most efficient position to protect my spine in any case, regardless of the exercise? This point leads into the topic of what is postural integrity? When I think about posture, there are two characters that come to mind. One being the hunchback Notre Dame, the other one being Hercules. While Hercules stands up tall with his chest out and shoulders back, the hunchback of Notre Dame is constantly leaning forward, shoulders rounded, and neck in a very uncomfortable position. While these two characters represent two very extreme ends of the spectrum when it comes to spinal positioning, they both represent positive and negative aspects of posture. The spine is organized into four different curvatures, cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral. Looking at the body in the sagittal plane, both the cervical and lumbar vertebrae form what's called the lordic curve, meaning that they create a bend in the anterior direction. In contrast, the thoracic and the sacral vertebrae form what's called a kyphotic curve, meaning that they create a bend in the posterior direction. When the spine is neutral, all four curves occur naturally, meaning that you're in the ideal position to withstand the greatest amount of compression and shearing forces. During exercise, especially in someone who's inexperienced or somebody who doesn't understand what it is to have a neutral spine, oftentimes people will cause accentuated curves, leading to microtrauma in the discs and eventual disc degeneration. So how do we set ourselves up to protect the spine during exercise? Well, to start, Lift your shoulders up, pull them back, put them down. That sets your pectoral girdle and your scapula into a neutral position, organizing the kyphotic curve in the thoracic portion of your spine. Then we engage the glutes, not to pull the hips into an exaggerated posterior pelvic tilt, but to set the pelvis into a position that naturally allows the lumbar spine to rest in a neutral lordic curve. With the head facing forward, we tuck our chin, ensuring there's no bending or twisting in any direction of the neck. Now we've achieved neutral posture. Now that we understand how to organize ourselves into a neutral spine position, it's now time to look at how to brace and stabilize the spine during dynamic movement and under load. Think of your intervertebral discs as a jelly donut. The outside of the disc, which is also called the annulus, would be the pastry, and the inside of the disc, which is the nucleus, would be the jelly. If you compress a jelly donut on one side, then all the contents will squirt out. This is essentially the same thing that happens when someone has what's called a disc herniation, or they have a slip disc in their back. The inside contents of the annulus, which would be the nucleus, push out and protrude into the spinal cord, causing pain and impingement. While not all disc-related injuries have full protrusion, and some do have just a bulging disc, in which case the nucleus has not fully pushed through the annulus, it still places pressure on the spine. To avoid disc-related injuries, it's imperative to understand how to properly stabilize your core. The core musculature is primarily made up of three components, your anterior trunk muscles, which will be your internal external obliques, transverse abdominis, and your rectus abdominis, all which define your abdominal muscles, the posterior trunk muscles, which is your iliocostalis, your longissimus, and your spinalis, which are also known as your erector muscles, and finally the diaphragm. While there are a number of other smaller postural muscles that add to stability and give you greater motor control in your trunk, these are the primary movers that help stabilize and give you the greatest intra-abdominal pressure. In the example of a squat, while initially we're going to set our shoulders back into a neutral position and make sure our spine is neutral while standing, next what we're going to do is we're going to take in a deep breath. By filling the thoracic cavity with air, we're going to cause the diaphragm to contract and it's going to end up pushing down against the abdominal wall, creating pressure. As our diaphragm contract and push down against the abdominal wall, our core musculature remain tight. This increases your intra-abdominal pressure and maintains tightness and stability around the lumbar spine. Ultimately, the goal with all this is to help someone better understand postural integrity and how to brace their spine. It's also important to realize that this isn't for everybody. If you're someone who's part of a special population or currently recovering from a previous spinal injury, then the way in which we load the spine, the way in which we brace our core can impact that. After all, if you have an alternative bracing modality or technique in which to stabilize your spine, given special considerations, then go with that. 
Obviously, everything we do in the gym is designed to help reduce the risk of injury. If we're suddenly doing something that helps induce or further causes damage, then we want to avoid that as much as possible. All materials used in the making of this video will be in the description box below. If you got any questions on the current topic or if you'd like to suggest future topics, feel free to leave that in the comment section. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe.